My name is Bernell Coughlin, and I'm here with my mom, Lily Coughlin, also known as Number One. N- number One, do you remember when we first did Story Call? Yes, uh, 2015, I think. How have things changed since then? Some things has not changed. The Lord Nightward is still stuck in 2005. Because you know, when you turn on TV, what you see? You see Bourbon Street, you yeah, see the you Saints, see you see everything is living good. Take 10 minutes of ride to the Lord Knight Ward. There's still no banks. There's no doctor's office, a dentist's office. We have none of that. The only thing that changed is my little building. We have a barber shop, a sweet shop, and we now have a laundry room. Everybody come there to the store because there's nowhere else for them to go. Do you remember I told you about that day they had that little girl behind the grocery store? Because it was already after dark. Yeah. So I had to ask why are you at my building after dark? And she said, I had free Wi-Fi. She came yeah. over there to do her homework. So I said, no, I got to fix this problem. So the next thing that we're doing is opening up an internet lounge. Mm-hmm. I'm extremely happy about that. You had lots of different obstacles, like Hurricane Ida or COVID. Why did you stay open during those times? Because there was many people that was doing much worse than us. I remember, I ain't gonna say the lady's name because she still shops today, but it was an elderly lady. She had her grandkids with her and she had a gallon of milk and some candy, some chips, you know, for the kids. And she attempted to swipe the card and it declined. And she stood there and cried. Now I did something I wasn't supposed to do, but I did it anyway. I came from behind my counter and I gave a hug because at that time we were supposed to have the six feet distance in between us. And I told her, take the items, feed your grandkids. When you get your money, come back and pay. And then I started seeing that again and again with a lot of other customers. So I got a journal and I wrote down names and uh, the items they had and how much it is. When they got the stimulus checks, some people did come back and they, they paid it. And I still have that book today. Yeah, you're carrying your community strictly on your back, and sometimes I worry about you. Is there anything that would make you just give up? Nothing. I'm not a quitter. If you can see the look on some of these customers' faces, begging for something to eat or a job, it hurts. So some days I'm madder than a six-shooter. And then other days I, I cry, and I have to sit in my car for a few minutes and get myself composed because I have to be positive for everybody else. What would you hope your legacy to be? I never really thought about that. Um, but something like in the military, you know how people say you only live once? That's not the truth. You don't just live once. You only die once. You live every day. So every day that you live, you have to do something impactful. You're not just born to fall in love, have a few kids, get a job, pay your bills, grow and die. That's not why you're here. You have to find out why you're here. And my purpose is easy. It's service. I appreciate you, and I know the neighborhood appreciates you much more than you would ever know. 